Yes, so once again, uh, welcome here at the next uh, lecture at uh, Frostcom 12. Uh, next lecture, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be great because it's uh, Minto Joseph talking about Linux kernel debugging for resist admins, which is uh, quite an interesting topic and, uh, um, from my point of view. Um, so just one more thing before we start, if you like the, the talk or even if you dislike, which I don't believe, but please provide us some feedback, log on to the, to the FRAP, to the program uh, um, software um, on Frostcon.de and uh, give us some feedback because it really helps us uh, to, uh, to, to organize um, this event. So um, yeah, enough of the talk. Uh, please give some warm hands for Minto Joseph. Hello. Um, so, how many sysadmins here? Good. How many kernel hacker? I saw one. Okay. Okay, you are going to answer the QA. Um, so, uh, so this uh, talk is based on my experiments and um, um, experience based on. Um, my sysadmin job, like uh, of, on, like somebody who has been managing systems for quite a long time. Um, so this is, I hope this will help um, sysadmins who are currently in the verge of trying to do something in kernel uh, to do more. Um, so I, I currently work with a Canadian company called Pythian. Um, uh, so I will start my talk. So, so this is the agenda of this. Is what I'm planning to cover, like some basic investigation methodologies, uh, and some common issues, uh, and some tools. Pretty simple. And why? Why should uh, sysadmins do um, kernel debugging? Uh, of course, to learn more about the systems we manage. Um, Debug efficiently when you face an issue, and root cause analysis. This is becoming more and more um, important nowadays with more focus on SRE, um, DevOps kind of uh, workflows, integrating post-mortem analysis and everything in the workflow. So, so this is the thing which I'm going to cover. You, you all must have seen some user complaining, or maybe uh, in the shape of a um, Nagios alert, seeing that yeah, my system is not responding. I mean, I'm, the whole talk is based on this. Um, so I have the, the investigation I have uh, split into two, um, before reboot and after reboot. Why reboot? Um, because many times uh, you would end up rebooting your system if you face a kernel issue. Um, not all the times, many times. Um, but let's talk about that more. Um, so um, I'm just going to talk about stuff which we generally do. So you basically identify whether uh, the claim is actually um, right, whether it is a system issue or a service issue. Like yes, a user might be complaining uh, my app is not working, the, the system is not working, that doesn't mean that the system is down. You do the basic uh, talking, you do the basic uh, magic with your telnet ping uh, tool set and see whether uh, whether issue is system or service issue. Mm. Then uh, you will check out um, whether um, uh, what do you see in the screen? Like, uh, if you have like um, any kind of user-provided console, you will check. Um, you, if you have like a VM, you will check the VM console. Um, KVM. Uh, anybody heard of KVM? Like somebody with a grey beard probably know. Right? It's this uh, uh, switch which we uh, switch between different monitors and data centers. You check um, the screen and see whether um, what is the issue. If possible, um, network connectivity definitely. You will try to um, see the con how is the connectivity, um, whether the, the network connectivity issue is within the system, 
using um, ETS tool or if config and logs. Um, or you can check if there is any connectivity issue uh, to the system. And if we check all of this stuff and we identify that it is a system issue, um, how do we, f what do we do next? I mean, um, it, there could be cases um, where the system is totally stuck. Um, you are able to connect to the system, but um, it's not responding at all. You, like, if you, you, can, you can see something in the screen, or maybe nothing in the screen, but it is not responding to anything. Um, maybe or may not be you are able to connect to net network. What would you do? Um, uh, you can try SysRQ. Um, so why SysRQ? SysRQ um, is a kernel uh, technology, a mechanism which will allow you to send um, keys. Generally, it is called magic keys. And it will allow the system to dump um, useful information. It will allow the, um, the kernel to do um, useful stuff, uh, like sync your file systems, or even uh, panic your kernel. I mean, wh I mean, why that is useful? I will come to that later. Um, but let's have a quick look at SysRQ. Um, so SysRQ. How about now? Sorry? The font a bit uh, larger. A bit more? So can, yeah. Okay. It's better. Yeah, it's fine. It's better on the video. Okay, so this is the SysRQ kernel uh, CCTL parameter. You can enable it. Um, once you enable it, you can, um, in, if you have access to your keyboard, you can uh, type uh, Alt, SysRQ, and the related key. Um, so let me type. Um, the another way to uh, send a SysRQ request would be echoing the parameter, echoing the um, value. For example, echo m to proc SysRQ, SysRQ trigger. It will dump the memory information to your syslog. Um, let's have a look. So you can see the memory information is dumped here. What can we do with this? I will talk about this later. I mean, how to make sense of this. Um, don't be alarmed with the ball of test. I'll, um, so we can also dump the thread state information of all the processes. Uh, let's give it a couple of seconds. OK. You can see uh, the process trace information. Um, you can see the process name. You can see the uh, state of process, whether the process is sleeping or in un uninterruptible sleep, which is D state, or which is in runnable state, which is R state. Then you can see the code path in which uh, the process, uh, the code path which process was executing. Um, what to do with the code path? I generally, if, uh, if I want to try uh, understanding what is going on with this, I will just uh, look at the kernel functions. These are the kernel functions. I will uh, maybe go into the kernel tree. And so I have already run C tags here. A lot of people, oh, yeah, it's a different window. How about, is it good? Yeah. Oh, so I have already done C tags here. Um, it will basically create uh, ta C tag information um, so that uh, a text editor like v Vim can have a look. For example, I'm just doing a basic VFS write. I'm just looking for it. So I can just go right into the code. Um, I can look for, like, I want to see another instances of the code. I can just easily look. A lot of people do. Um, C scope. Um, I don't use it because I'm not a kernel developer. So I don't have to search too much uh, code. OK, so, so that is SysRQ. Um, we will talk about, um, I mean, how this can be more useful would be 
finding the arguments which are passed uh, by one function to another, that will be interesting. Um, or finding the arguments for a, of a function. Um, we'll come to that later. Um, let's go and continue. So after the reboot, um, we all check the syslog, of course, uh, your var log messages, your, your var log kernel. Um, then you check the sysstat. Uh, I hope everybody has sysstat installed in your system. Uh, even if you have your fancy metric system, definitely try to install sysstat. Include that in your um, in your AMIs, your images. Um, I'm pretty sure most of the people knows, but I'll just show. Uh, so sysstat includes SAR command, which uh, we can have a look at the system log information. Um, so. Oh, sorry, no, system load information here. And you can see whether the load was in user space, uh, uh, system space, IO weight, all this stuff. Mm. This, these are stuff which we generally do. Mm. You can check memory, stuff like this. If anybody have more questions, you can ask um, after the talk, uh, any of this, or like uh, when we have QA. Uh, I'm pretty sure that many of you have interfaced with some OS vendors and have provided a VM core one time or another. If you're a sysadmin, so VM core is a memory dump uh, of your Linux system. Um, we'll talk about VM core uh, later. Mm. Now let's just see a few stuff uh, like panics and uh, kernel related issues which you might see uh, or you must have seen uh, in your work life. So this is a normal panic. It's a very old panic. I chose it for a reason because it's pretty straightforward and easy to explain. Um, so this is a kernel bug at, um, and you can see the, uh, the file name in the source code and the line number. Mm. So uh, this panics generally happen when um, there is a, a condition called bug on uh, in kernel source, and if your code ended up being there, uh, this, can, this panic generally hits. Um, and you can see the, so I, I just, I'm just showing this just to uh, get you a bit more uh, familiarized with the structure of uh, panic, so the next time when you have a look at it, you make more sense out of it. So this was a CPU um, which was, uh, executing at that time, and the modules loaded uh, in the system during the time of issue. You can see if a particular module is having any kind of flags, like uh, proprietary or force loaded, you can see this. Um, you can see the PID uh, of the process which was running during the time, mm, uh, but a process cannot panic a kernel, period. Uh, a process behavior can trigger a panic, but a process from user space cannot panic a kernel. If that happens, there is something problem. The problem is in the kernel. Mm. Then, yeah, you can see the kernel version. You can see whether or not the kernel was tainted with any proprietary module or stuff. And this is the most important thing if you are starting with this. Uh, if you just want to Google it out, don't Google these. You just Google this. This is the instruction pointer. This was the function which was being executed when this panic happened. So uh, in 64 bits, you, you will find ERIPs. In 32 bit, you will see EIPs. I'll skip the whole registry part here. And I will go to the call trace again. So this is the. This is the call trace, like the call trace which you have seen in the SysRQ third state output. You can see that there's a system call um, function, and it is either most of the, um, or probably all of the sys system call related uh, kernel calls are like this, sys underscore times or sys underscore uh, the system call name. Uh, so in this case, um, two uh, processes uh, trying to do something, and there was a race condition which caused the issue. But we'll not get into how to debug a kernel panic. That's a very big 
topic, and I'm not 100% um, uh, qualified to uh, do that, but I can show you pointers on how to do that. And um, I have some specific knowledge about some specific part of subsystems, but definitely if you have any questions, I can try to point you to people or try to point you to resources. Um, uh, so this is a soft lockup. Uh, again, why would a panel, kernel panic happen? A kernel panic happens when kernel uh, thinks that at this point of time, um, I cannot properly um, recover the system. Kernel might um, think that, yeah, at this point of time, I cannot, um, this, if I'm continuing, this might cause a data loss. In that case, that is when um, kernel causes panic. That is the standard uh, definition. There could be a lot of different uh, logic below that, but this is the baseline. So uh, next is a lockup, the soft lockup. Um, soft lockup doesn't need to always um, cause the system unusable. Uh, soft lockup usually happens when kernel tries to evict a process from the CPU, but it is not able to, so it, it's continuously uh, running for 10 seconds. Um, so here you can see uh, the instruction pointer is EIP because it's a 32-bit system. Um, you can see this, the pattern is same. The, the, you can see the CPU, you can see uh, the registry information, you can see the call trace. Um, here, one more thing you can see. You can see that some of this code is coming from module, one specific module. So um, or this specific code is coming from this module. So this is also kind of useful information. Um, now I'll show you an example of uh, hung task. Um, hung task uh, happens when a process is in D state for more than 120 seconds. What is D state? Uh, D state is uh, uninterruptible sleep. That basically happens when a process is waiting on IO, some, most of the cases. Uh, there can be uh, other cases as well, mostly IO. Uh, so here, the process is waiting on D state for more than 120 seconds. You can, this, this can, this behavior in, in some cases can be an expected behavior. Your process might be uh, supposed to be waiting, like running, being on D state for a long time. There, there can be corner cases. In that case, you can just disable the hung task. Um, hung task uh, necessarily doesn't uh, make the system unusable, but many cases it can. Here also you can see the process, um, the, um, the process state, and the call trace. You can try to uh, read through the kernel code and uh, functions one by one and see how the um, code flows. Mm. So another is out of memory. I'm pretty sure that all of the sysadmins have seen an out of memory error. Uh, here, uh, I have chosen this uh, specific because, um, specific um, message because this is from a very old kernel and I don't have to explain much. Nowadays, I would have to explain all uh, new ma, all the new um, uh, code-related changes, um, all those stuff here. But um, you can see um, it is dumping. This is the same information which is dumped by um, the sysrq, uh, memory, inf uh, memory dump. So the pattern, the, it would look the same. Of course, it will have different information, but the, the pattern is all the same. You can see that um, you can see the number of active pages, and num number of inactive pages. Mm. Active and inactive pages basically mean that uh, kernel uses a, a list called LRU, least recently used. It is used to identify whether a particular process is being um, a particular page, whether a page is currently used or not. Uh, if kernel think, remember think that it is active, it will uh, be in the active list. And if a kernel want to free a particular page, it will first put it to inactive before it frees up. So um, you have the active and inactive pages. You have the dirty pages, dirty pages are pages which are 
uh, in the memory which have uh, changed information, which are not written back. Uh, write back is the pages, if I remember correctly, which are in, in flight, which has been currently written back to the system. Um, this unstable is NFS specific stuff. Um, yeah. NFS does have this unstable tree, which uh, have uh, pages which need to be written back. Of course, there's free memory and the slab. Uh, slab is basically um, kind of objects which are used, uh, defined, predefined in the kernel, so that you get contiguous, um, so the page allocations will be contiguous. So it, um, it usually have the dentry level information, it will have, uh, it have all the k-malloc in a, objects. Um, you can check uh, slab top command in your system to see uh, slab information. Mapped is the mapped pages. Uh, it's basically yeah, any pages which does have a file back, backup. Uh, and then page table entries. Um, it's, it does have all the information on where the pages are in the memory. Um, then, so this is this have like a list of uh, pages on, and we are, it's trying to show you where all the pages are allocated. Mm, then you will see uh, the different zones. You see DMA, normal, high mum. This is a 32-bit system. That's why you see all DMA, normal, high mum stuff. Um, so um, one thing, why did this system panicked? Because it does have a lot of memory. It does have almost uh, free pages. It does have considerable amount of memory. Any idea? Why would this um, system face out of memory? When does a system face out of memory? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, when it, when the system normally when the system runs out of memory, right? When um, so yeah, and also uh, yeah. So the question is from me. Yeah. Okay. So you want to repeat my question or his question? The, the answer because otherwise you can't hear it. And if you say, oh, okay. Yes, that's right. And, and oh yeah. Okay. Screen, just say, yes, right. Okay. Um, so um, let's continue. Um, I will tell you why uh, the system, this system specifically panicked, because of the zones. Um, because each zone does, what are these zones? Uh, DM, uh, traditionally, we have DMA zones, and normal, and high mum. It's a bit complicated topic, but um, long time back when the DMA devices can only access, uh, some of the devices can only access the DMA, so uh, can only access up to I think um, 16, yeah, 16 um, MB of RAM. So and um, so for those devices, uh, DMA zone was introduced, and rest of th then uh, kernel mostly works in normal zone. Then high mum is used um, for mapping uh, rest of the memory because 32 bit only have. Um, like theoretically, it can only have uh, 4 GB of RAM. It's a bit more complicated topic, but basically, we have different zones like um, DMA, normal, and high mum. And in this case, uh, each zone does have a uh, few watermarks. One is free, min, and low. Now, the thing is, when the free mem goes below min, that is when an out of memory happens in the end. That is a specific reason any out of memory happens. Uh, so when the free mem goes below low, it will, the kernel will very actively uh, try to reclaim memory uh, using your pre flush, using your uh, whatever the current daemon kernel is running, uh, the kernel daemons, it will try to reclaim memory. And it will try to reclaim memory and until um, the free reaches high. So in this case, even though there was high, high mum does have enough free memory, the normal zone didn't have enough free memory. So this was like a historical problem with 32-bit systems. 
Uh, nowadays, we don't have to worry about it. I just um, use this example from a 32-bit system so that I can explain um, that there is something called sons in our memory, in our virtual memory. Then we have buddy allocator. Buddy allocator basically kind of show you, show the kernel uh, in each sons how much contiguous memory is available. So if you see, uh, if more memory is allocated in, in 4KB, uh, the, the chance of the, the system being in a system memory being highly fragmented state is high. So when uh, the more memory is here uh, with, with larger chunks of memory, that means that the memory is less fragmented. So uh, that is one more thing. So if, uh, some of the applications probably need contiguous memory. Uh, very large contiguous memory. So when it tries to allocate uh, like a contiguous piece of memory, it can have page allocation failures and stuff like that. Mm. And yeah, you have the swap information, then you have the process which was killed. Um, for killing a process, uh, normally a function called badness is used. It does use different um, logic uh, like a set of logics uh, to um, allocate uh, points to a, a different process in the system. For example, if a process is niced, it will be given less priority to kill. If if a process is a root pro run, uh, if it's, if the process is run by root, the chance of it is getting killed is less. So the badness value is based on that, mm. and. Um, currently, in, in the current kernel, we have OOM um, score and OOM ADJ parameters, um, which can kind of tune this uh, behavior for each uh, PIDs and make sure, for example, if you don't want your MySQL to be killed, you can uh, pass uh, a value to the OOM score, uh, like PROC PID OOM score, and uh, you can make, set it to zero, I guess, then it or minus 17 or something, then it will make sure that whenever the OOM kill happens, uh, your favorite uh, process will not get killed. Um, OK, then we have uh, normal hangs. Um, like, hang is a very bad term, actually. I mean, it's a very abstract term. But here, I'm just, I have just listed um, like hardware issues. Um, like there can be machine check exceptions or error detection and cor correction, EDAC stuff. Um, if you find anything uh, like something like machine check events, you can have a look at var log MC log um, and probably contact the vendor if it is a bare metal system, if it is a hyper, if it is a hypervisor, if it's a VM, check the hypervisor, uh, talk to the hypervisor vendor maybe. It doesn't many times happen. If it happens in a uh, virtual machine, it's probably a bug. Then there can be CPU, memory, or I.O. utilization, um, which can cause a hang. So these OOM or hang task, these are also kind of uh, resource allocation issues. Um, but um, you can uh, also use SAR tools like SAR to identify issues which is caused by high utilization of resources. Let's get into VM core a bit. So uh, VM core is, um, for uh, dumping a VM core, we need uh, a crash kernel parameter in the grub. Uh, and traditionally, long time back, it was only a net dump and disk dump available. Uh, net dump was dumping the memory uh, over network, and disk dump was dumping in the local disk. Currently, KDUMB is capable of uh, dumping it everywhere. So uh, now, KDUMB can, KDUMB is configured in ETC KDUMB. Uh, yeah, if if KDUMB can only dump when there is a panic, KDUMB dumps um, the virtual, uh, the, the, the memory information, or the, the memory of a system when uh, there is a panic. So if you specifically want to debug one of the previous issue uh, in detail, if you don't understand from the screenshots, if you don't understand, you can 
intentionally panic this kernel. I'm not talking about every time you set this parameter. I'm just suggesting that if you have a recurring issue, if you want to avoid like an ongoing issue, if you want to have a deeper investigation, you can pass this parameter. So when there is a soft lockup or an OOM or a hung task, panic the system so that uh, KDAM will dump a VM core. Mm. You can also uh, do alt sysrqc. Or, uh, previously, I dumped a system um, thread information. So instead of that, if I'm doing a C, this will panic the system. I'm not going to do that now. Um, and that will dump a VM core. Um, if, if By default, it will dump in var crash. Um, so, OK. So let's have it. What's the time? OK. So let's have a quick look at VM core. So I have a VM core here, which I have. So this VM core I have dumped from this system. And for um, analyzing a VM core, I need um, a, a command line tool called Crash. Crash is ba basically a wrapper around the GDB tool, which you probably know. Mm. And this VM Linux I have extracted from uh, kernel-debug info package, um, which does have the debug symbols. Um, unlike your VM Linux file in your uh, slash boot. Mm. So you can see oh, the GDB information. It will give you the basics, uh, basic information on the, the kernel, the, when it crashed, it was a long time back. So it's um, the uptime of the system during the time of the panic. So you can see that the panic was caused by a sysrq dump. You can see the uh, kernel release information, uh, the host name. You can see the processes which are running in the system at the time of issue. Uh, you can see the PID information. You can see the task. You can see the state of different processes. RU is runnable processes. Uh, IN is sleeping. Uh, if it is UN, if there is a UN that is uninterruptible sleep, if I want to see the trace of one particular process, I can just do BT PID. Um, another in interesting thing would be uh, the memory state during the time of issue. Um, you can see uh, when when the system was hung or when the system was in panic state, what was happening in the system. Um, now, so this, so this was the process which actually panicked the system. Um, this was on context. Uh, you can see that it is bash because I ran the command from bash. I did echo c proc sysrq trigger from bash. Uh, you can see that there's a VFS write uh, in the proc uh, file system. Now, what is VFS? Uh, VFS is an interface with, um, between different file systems and the kernel. Um, so here, what I would like to, so I will kind of demonstrate how to find an argument and uh, which is passed. So you can see the stack information like this. Oh. Sorry. So this will dump the, the complete stack of this call trace. You can see that after sys after sys write, it's calling VFS write, and there is stack information here. Um, from this doesn't make sense. This looks invalid. So let's see what does VFS write have. So this is the code. I can just go to the source as well. So you can see that 
it does have a struct as struct, struct file as first argument. So I'm going to pass that struct file. And I'm going to use that that memory. You can so you can see the structure, the, the, the whatever there is in the structure. So here you can see the UID, um, the PID, it's probably wrong, mm, all this information. Mm. What's interesting here is the dentry. Dentry is the, mm, the storage uh, place of um, your directory structure. For instance, that's just it's one job of dentry. So let's check struct dentry and see what is in there. Ah, typo. Look, you can see the name. So I was just looking for this. You can see the in the in the dentry it does have the information of we obviously know that I run sysarchy trigger, so it made sense more to dissect this particular thread, this particular process. You can see that this was uh, the name of the, here also, the DI name also, we can see that's name of the um, file it was being accessed. Mm. Another thing which you can do is probably look at the task details. Um, for example, here there's a yum stuff. So there is a command called task. You can see the task related information, uh, timestamp. You can do a lot from this, uh, but uh, all the task related information is here as well. So, sorry? Okay, okay. So, yeah, so, yeah, this is basically what I was planning to cover. I think I was super fast. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, you, any questions? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's ask, we have the help. We have run queue. Uh, so run queue does show you um, whatever processes which were running in each CPU. Uh, during the, it's not whatever process which were running, whatever process which were in the runnable state, uh, and the current, sta current process as well. And then what else do we have? What else I am familiar with? Yeah, I think the Vim information, yeah, of course, the mount. Uh, so the VFS mount information is also there. So if you want to see that, yeah. sorry. Oh, sorry. So I, I probably have to get it from a stack, not from here. Yeah, so you can, yeah, you, oh. I have to check whether, I, I think it is VFS underscore mount, but I don't remember exactly, but yeah, VFS mount. So you can see, you can pass through the uh, mount information as well. Yeah, stuff like that. Oh, IPCS is there, your uh, shared memory information. Yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned dirty pages and also pages being in state of right uh, Where are these pages being written to? Can you please repeat? Yeah, are memory pages being dirty or also being, uh, being written back somewhere, but where are they being written back? Disk. They come from? Paging space. Yeah, yeah. It's um, not necessarily. Yes, when you, when you end that file, you're doing 
pages, they are not going to bring back to the space. So in general, they have some, some representation on this. Yes. I didn't understand. Okay. Probably you got your answer. Yeah. And then files. Okay. Any other questions? If, yeah. Uh, is there a way to initialize the uh, virtual terminal? How, uh, most of my personal problems uh, are related to the XML. And I have no puzzle at, at this moment. And I don't know my current IP address, so I can't access my system uh, by the network. And I need some way to initialize uh, yeah, so you are talking about um, a, if you have a UI. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the, uh, and one thing I forgot to mention, if you want to run any of this SysRQ, you probably need to switch to one of the terminals, like Alt, um, Control Alt, F1, and yeah, then, it, it yeah. doesn't switch in this case. So okay. I, I think it's an hardware issue, but I... So one, one thing um, you can do probably is if... Okay, so the question is you are having... Uh, a UI interface, and if you face a hang, how do you recover? Uh, if it is, um, if you are having this issue, and if it is an ongoing issue, and you suspect that it is like large number of uh, D-state processes, a lot of I/O, or if you want to um, find what is happening, and or specifically if it is a load average issue, if there is a solution. There is a tool called Hang. Hang, hang watch, yeah, hang watch. What hang watch does is you can just install the hang watch. It will monitor the load average. Uh, load average is a very tricky subject. Load average doesn't mean it is there is a problem. Load average is a calculation based on the runnable processes and uninterruptible sleep process, basically R state and D state processes. Um, so if your load average is, for example, about 10, um, the hang watch will detect that and it will automatically run a SysRQ. You, like, which of which you want to configure, you can configure it in the, sysr, in the hang watch, and you can do that. That is one possibility. Another thing is that if um, kernel itself have uh, some other method or, like, uh, methods to uh, deal with this, you probably must have seen NMI watchdog. Uh, if, um, if there is a problem which would affect the interrupts, uh, it's, it's non-maskable interrupts. Uh, if the NMI interrupts are not incrementing over time, it will kernel itself will dump um, an NMI watchdog error. And if you have configured that NMI watchdog should panic the kernel, it will it will panic the kernel. So the kernel also have its own mechanism. Uh, with, but specifically, if your problem is with UI, I think uh, it's um, you probably try can try to connect uh, through SSH. Can you do that? And do your commands. Yeah, you're you're saying you have a um, uh, you have a geo a system which you use like mostly for UI, like GNOME or something. So, uh, okay. are you kind of like able to, if it's a genome terminal, I think you can just do, I think, Alt F2 and press R, which will re refresh the terminal, re refresh the UI, if it's a GNOME uh, genome. Oh, okay. nothing is moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah.
depends on whether the kernel actually crashed or only the GPU. Okay. As, as mentioned, I don't know the, the current IP address of my system. So, I mean, you can, after you uh, recover the system, you can check the logs and see what was happening in the, uh, I mean, you can find something from the logs, and based on that, you can continue in investigation as well. I mean, there is no one way to do things. You just need to improvise it based on what you have. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, thanks for answering the questions. Uh, anything else? Good.